We're here at the Palazzoli Manufacturing Plant in Brescia, North Italy, and what are we here to see, guys? We're going to look at the manufacturing process offered downstairs, and we're going to look at it from the point of the high bay lighting behind us. Absolutely. We're going to see the stages that take it through the process in yeah. order to get to the light fitting itself. Too. Absolutely. So from raw material coming into the building, we're going to see what processes that goes through to turn it into a light fitting. And we've been told that some of the things that happen inside this factory are absolutely fascinating to watch. So I can't wait to go and see them. I think we get down there now. As soon as we can. Come on. Let's go. So we've come into sort of the warehousing section here. You can see there's endless rows of castings behind us, Gary, but this one that looks like a piece of a jet engine here uh, is the one that's caught your eye. So what have we got going on here? Yeah, so all the castings behind us are specified to Palazzoli's own recommendation. So okay. we've actually got their spec on these. Yep. And this one's for a high bay light fitting. Okay. Okay, and we're gonna look at the process that sends it from casting through to LED yeah. fitting. However, there is a key feature about this, Joe. And yeah. I'm pleased to hand it over because of the weight. <laughs> There's a couple of things, isn't there? Uh, first of all, we've got this rather uh, lovely kind of uh, finned array here. And the key purpose of that is to allow for heat dissipation. This is an LED product. It is. We know that heat dissipation is key in order to ensure a good quality, long life product. And we've also got, this is just a general mounting that all of the parts of the light fitting are gonna go into. And that's a really strong, robust fitting. It so is. this is as raw as the product gets. This is how it enters the factory. And we're gonna have a look at some of the key processes that turn this from a casting into a light fitting. So Joe, we moved over to another part of the process for the light fitting. Yep. However, the high bay light fitting didn't look like this in the opening shot. Uh, no, that's a very clever machine that's turned it from that into this. Obviously, this is a slightly different product. So can you talk us through the process that's happened to this that would also happen to our light fitting? Yeah, absolutely. So the machine behind us will take our product and first of all, it will mill any rough edges away to make yep. sure we've got a nice finish. That's especially important where perhaps we've got a gasket going on yeah. to ensure a good seal once that happens but the machine will also drill and thread holes. So here you can see there's gonna be a lid that's gonna sit on here. We've got fixing holes in the bottom, perhaps for a plate. Okay. And also it will drill and thread holes on the outside. So what sort of hole have we got there, guys? What's that gonna receive? That will be receiving a cable gland, yeah. okay, in order that we can get the electrical closure up. Absolutely. So Joe, we've got an enormous machine behind us. Yeah. We've caught up with our casting, but what's happening at this stage of the process? So this enormous machine, as you say, is the surface treatment area of the plant. And what's going to happen is our casting is going to go into this machine and it's going to go through the first stage of surface treatment where it's going to be really thoroughly cleaned. So it's going to get a really uh, good cleaning on there, which means that when it goes to the next stage of the process, the powder treatment process, the powder is going to adhere really, really firmly to the surface and give a lovely finish. So our LED casting has come out of the cleaning process, Joe. It's arrived at this stage, and this is a really important stage to the machine behind us. What's happening as we go through this window? Well, this machine behind us will put a coating on loads of different products that have different sizes, different dimensions, different parts that require uh, different levels of paint. Okay. So as it passes through this rectangular window here, the machine actually scans the casting and it recognizes what type of casting it is. It then sends information to the powder coating machine behind us, which will then load up various parameters into the spray nozzles and different things like that, which will then align itself more accurately with the casting and give it a better finish. So as we see our high bay lighting going into the powder coating, Joe, mm. before it gets to that stage, they've added a little sticker onto it. Yeah. What can be the thinking behind putting a sticker on for an area that won't get painted? Well, what's quite interesting is if you look where the sticker is located, there's actually four holes in the back, but only one of them's covered over. Okay. And that's going to be for the earth connection. So what we don't want is powder coating getting inside there, being baked and set in rock hard, so that we then can't get an earth screw into there. So very clever thinking there. You'll also notice on the other side, there's four little white pegs. Yes. And again, that's the same principle, so that when the lid goes onto there, it can be screwed on and achieve a nice fit on there. I think you're having me on here, John. You're saying that the painting process is occurring, <laughs> and I can see a box down there, and that box ain't full of paint. Uh, well, actually, when we talk about the coating process, it is a powder coating rather than a paint. 
So there's some very interesting things going on in the machine behind us. One of those is that as the powder is sprayed onto the thing that's going to be finished, in this case our light fitting, the two components are charged electrically. So one has a slightly positive charge okay. and one has a slightly negative charge. Right. And that means that there is a strong att attraction between the powder and the object being coated. And it creates a lovely smooth layer over the surface. So hence when they're telling me they're recovering the paint, yeah. they're not actually recovering paint, they're recovering powder, yeah. putting it back in and the process goes again. again. How efficient is that? That the waste powder that normally might just go into the atmosphere, perhaps be sucked out, is going back into the powder coating process, which is really, really efficient. Where does it go to next then, Joe? Once it's been powder coated, it goes from here, it goes through to the ovens where it is baked, much like you'd buy a pottery in a kiln in order to harden that surface and create the tough layer that offers really good protection. So we're out of powder coating, Joe, and I think it clearly shows the point, doesn't it, that our earth terminal there is free from paint, so we yep. get the best possible connection for our CPC, our earth connection. Yep. As we turn it over, is there any other things that we're going to add to this? Absolutely. So you can see this groove that's been uh, machined into here in the casting process. And what we now need to do is we need to start thinking about how we're going to put a gasket onto there. So I think we go and see how uh, that gasket's applied in a very clever way. So Joe, we've seen the final surface treatment being applied to the light bin itself, but we really know how important it is to maintain the IP rating, say for moisture, for humidity and maybe dust. Yeah. How are we going to ensure that on our light fitting? Well, as electricians, we've all been there, haven't we, where we're trying to put the lid onto a light fitting and there's that rubber gasket that we're wrestling with. We've managed to put it back into the groove and it keeps falling out as we put the lid on. So to overcome that, what Palazzoli are doing here is they've got an alternative method. The machine behind us is dispensing a two-part polyurethane bead of material into a special groove around the light fitting. And as it's dispensed, it actually sets inside that groove, it bonds to the surface, and it creates a really high integrity seal around the light fitting to keep moisture out. And that's permanently in situ. Yeah, absolutely, it's a really clever idea. So a high bay lighting casting is now out of powder coating. Yep. We've also added the gasket. Yep. What's the next stage, Joe? So what we're going to do now is we're going to take what was a casting and we're going to turn it into our light fitting. So it's going to have all of the insides put into here, the control mechanism and the LEDs fitted. So it'll turn it from something that doesn't look a lot like a light fitting into something that is very clearly a light fitting. So our high bay light fitting is nearly complete. We're at the exciting stage for me because yep. we're introducing Joe over here, the LED. So let's bring the camera in and have a look. Whoa, 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 whoa. We can't actually get too close because this is a special working area. Notice there's a yellow line on the floor oh, here yes. that says ESD protected area. So that's electrostatic discharge. Uh -huh. And what that means is that we can't go in there unless we keep ourselves grounded. Because if we touch an LED component, uh, there might be some static on us that's built up and we could absolutely fry some of those delicate components and they won't work, so we want to avoid that. So we've got the LED light engine now, Joe. Yep. Terminology that I've only just been made aware of. Very well remembered. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. And we're adding on the lenses to each of the LED. Yeah. Why is that such an important part of the process, Joe? Sounds like a very simple part, doesn't it? But it's absolutely critical because what's happening here, the machines behind us, which are robots, not robots, because you can work alongside them and inside them without getting hurt. Uh, what they do is they are so incredibly delicate, they can actually peel the adhesive film backing off this lens, All right, okay. something that a lot of humans might struggle to, <laughs> to get off, and position it really carefully over the LED on the LED light engine. Now, the lens is really the critical part of the LED process because it determines what the spread of light coming out of the light fitting will look like. So we've got a few examples. Uh, if you've got street lighting, you might want a very wide diffusion of light, but very even. If perhaps you're trying to light up an escape route out of a building, you might want a very long, very narrow beam to illuminate a corridor or something like that. And that's all determined by the LED lens here that gets stuck onto the LED light engine. 
So a simplistic looking process, yeah. but super important in order to get the, the feature of the light correct. Absolutely. So it's the exciting part now, it's final assembly, Joe. Can you yep. just talk me through what's gone on in the actual high bay fitting now? Absolutely, so we've got the LED driver's been installed into the middle of the fitting there, and when the lid goes on this, there's a kind of a blacked out disc in the middle that, that just hides all that and makes it look nice and neat. We've got the LED modules have been installed around the outside and connected together. And a nice little touch as well. It's nice to see an old friend every now and then, isn't it? We've got Vargo connectors here being used uh, to make the final connections inside there. It's hardwired to the external cable, which uh, will probably in Europe be connected to a plug and plugged into an outlet. Uh, so this is now ready to go over for testing to make sure that it meets the specification that Palazzoli have uh, set out and see if it works. So we've assembled all the key components, Joe, yep. and we're now at that process, which I like, that requires us to get a smiley face yep. and a sticker. <laughs> so how are we going to achieve those with the process behind us? So we're going to use this machine. What we're going to do is we're going to lay the fitting into the machine in the correct position. We're okay. going to plug it in and power it up, and the machine is then going to run various tests. Okay. So it's going to check that all of the LEDs are on. Okay. It's going to make sure that the LEDs are emitting the right amount of light and oh. the right amount of intensity from which things can be inferred to make sure that the lens is in place and is in the correct position, so that's okay. very clever. But it will also run numerous electrical tests on here. So it will check the continuity of the CPC to the fitting. Right, okay. It will check the insulation resistance of the fitting, and it will check how much power that it's drawing as well. So it does a really thorough test in a lot of different areas. So that's going to take ages for it to run through all those tests, Joe. So how long is the next part of the process going to take? Less than 15 seconds once we hit the start button. Okay, let's get it ready then. Let's do it. But we're now 14 seconds. We've got a smiley face. We've got a smiley face. So you can see on this screen here, on this readout, we've got the continuity earth at the top and then insulation resistance, and in Europe, insulation resistance is often referred to as isolation. Okay. Yeah, so, ISO. And then we've got the power, and we're quite happy with that. So we've commented a lot as we've gone around this factory, Joe, how clean and tidy it is. Absolutely spotless, isn't it? And the process behind us is helping us do that. Yeah. It's 100 meters in length, which is obviously impossible to see on camera front on, but what is happening behind me? We've got an automated pallet processing system, and behind us, there is an automated system that can process and store 30,000 pallets at any given time. And that's not just product going out the door. No. Okay, so as you're looking behind us and seeing boxes going, what you think is going out, it's actually also bringing boxes in. Absolutely. So the system's dual purpose. Yes, yeah, so there's an incredible amount of synchronization going on behind us that helps to keep this factory nice and tidy and running really smoothly. So we've seen the high bay lighting from raw material all the way through the process yep. to an illuminated light fitting. Absolutely. And what have we got up there, Joe? Well, I don't think you can give any finer testimony to your product than by fitting it and installing it in your own factory. And this entire warehousing unit is illuminated by the Palazzoli Meta High Bay LED. We think it's a beautiful looking product. We think it's very, very fit for purpose. And it's been installed right here.